Good morning all, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I'm Philip from down up here in Bundaberg or down here in Bundaberg or the other side of the world, wherever you're from. Really critical part of camping, awnings. So today's video is about awnings, four drive awnings. Now I own quite a few as you can see. So we're going to go over them, each one, let you know what I think about them. So over the years, I've gone through quite a lot of awnings. About four years ago, I was still using the old systems where you had a tarp and about a dozen, a dozen and a half galvanized poles and goodness knows how many ropes and probably 20 pegs. And it'll take you like just about an hour to set it up. I was using those type of systems like we did in the old days and they were fine. They worked really well. But now, today, we want things that are more portable. We want to move a bit more. So then they started with the awnings that come off your side of the vehicles. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, over the years, I've gone over quite a few. Now, of all the awnings I've owned, there's every one of them there is bar one. I had one, the first one I ever purchased, and that was one of those super cheap brands. I had no issues with it, but I didn't know about water pooling. I woke up one morning, okay, I was out camping, and we had a storm overnight. When I got out of the tent, and I looked at my vehicle, at the time I had a Suzuki Vitara, and I looked at it, and the awning was bowed like this, and it was full of water. It hadn't collapsed, it was almost collapsing. I had a couple of broken poles. I had some parts of it was all bent, but it was bowed like this and it was full of water. And to get the water out wasn't easy. I had to get some fellow campers to help me. And it just so happened I was camping in a caravan park. <laughs> and I can remember it to this day when we finally released the water it was like a torrent went through the whole caravan park. That's how much water it was. It just went whoosh. I think we had to cut it. And as soon as we cut it, whoosh, it just flew down. It was like a waterfall. And it was like a tidal wave went through the campground. <laughs> so that was my first big lesson. So ever since then, I understood about water pooling. And I never had that problem since. Okay, so let's go over the order that I've purchased these awnings that I've owned. Now, after that super cheap brand that went it from, well, <laughs> you understand, we won't go talk about that again. I then went and purchased the King's brand. Now, this one's a turn, if I recall, this is a two and a half by three meter. So it's a two and a half meter wide and extends out by three meters. Now, I thought I'd go for a, a larger one at the time because of the bigger, I thought that'd be great, you know, bigger coverage area. Because the super cheap brand one I had was about two and a half by two meters, if I recall. And, and it, was, it was good, it was fine. But I thought that extra bit of coverage would be nice. So I went for this one. And yeah, there were some advantages and there were some disadvantages. I mean, the big advantage at the time, when I first started buying these awnings, I went for the cheapest of the cheapest of the cheapest I could find. That super cheap one was on like a 70% discount or something at the time. It was very cheap. And this one here, the King's one, I think I paid less than $100 for this. And it's still fine. It still works. The only thing I found, remember I was talking about the pooling issue. This one I had more of a pooling issue than the other one if I, if I wasn't careful because of that three metre length out here. So you had to really, each night I had to drop down the poles virtually down to about that level, angling down right down to that to make sure the water doesn't pool. Actually, let me tell you the story. That was fine up here because I used to have the kitchen I used to have everything at the back. I didn't have drawers at the back. So then what I did is I just pulled out everything over here and I had these walls that just slid in along the back and you could tie them up on the side and that worked really well. But then we started going into the drawer systems 
and the kitchens and fridges. And then I found, well, I need some cover out the back here. So that's when I started doing some research. Now, I came upon the 270 degree awnings. I saw some of the 270 degree awnings. And I think the first time I saw them was when I was out camping somewhere nearby. I can't remember. And there was, someone had a 270 degree awning. And it's one of the first time I came upon them. And I thought that was brilliant. And I believe it might have been the 30 second awning. It's actually very similar to the one I've got now. The final one I've got, which will come to you, you would have noticed in some of the recent videos what my latest, latest awning is. But what concerned me was the weight, because at the time I only had a little Suzuki Vitara. So now I didn't have a rooftop tent or anything, but it still concerned me the weight. So that's why I didn't buy one of, uh, one of those, and it's the only reason why I didn't get one, because I loved the idea of the freestanding. I've always wanted a freestanding. But then I came upon this one, the Drifter. This is the Drifter Rapid Wing Awning. So I've had this on my vehicle for about three years now, almost three years. So after I stopped using the, the Kings, because I wanted this coverage out the back, I went for this one. Now this one's not freestanding, but the big feature I loved about it, the Drifter Rapid Wing Awning, which is made in Australia, and it's got Australian WaxCon canvas on it, and the poles are also made in Australia by Superpeg. Now this was specially made for Drifter at the time. And what I loved about this was the quality, but not just that, was the weight. That one there, 17 kilos all up. You're looking around 17 kilos. Where the equivalent 30 second one that I was looking at purchasing at the time, I believe was around 26, 27 kilos. Now, in hindsight, it's not a lot of difference, but to me at the time, just a little vehicle, it would have supported it no problems at all, but I wanted to keep the weight down as much as possible. So hence I went for this. And it's been fine, it's been great. I've been very happy with it. But then, as you age a bit, I was starting to have problems. So the way this is set up, you've got to support, particularly when you get to this part, you basically got to hold, all the poles are attached to it, and you've got to support and hold the whole lot up above your head as you go around and put it down. And then it's very susceptible, the wind catching up, flicking it over and snapping off at the mounts here. Now they've designed a weak point in there, so the, where they connect onto the brackets on that corner piece there, it's like a plastic sleeve that slides in. But there was times for that reason, I was not able to set that up because most of the time I'm camping, I'm out solo camping on my own. And if there's any wind around, well you can't really set them up on your own. You need assistance, you need help. So often I'd have to ask someone to help to hold on to it. And then you go around and peg it all out. So what turned into a quick, fairly quick to set up, but then by the time you add the pegging and so on, but what I did like it, they got peggable feet, but that only works if the ground is hard. But if you're camping in sandy environments, like I do a lot, then you have to bring the ropes, etc. And there's more work involved, and then that's when you really need extra people to hold on to, particularly when you're on the beach. So quite often I had to wait until that breeze dropped down. About a year and a half ago, I then purchased my first rooftop tent, which was the Eye Camper, and it's around 74 kilograms. Then this weight started to build up, and I was, hmm, bit unsure about that. The biggest issue I had is the way the eye camper opened, as you've seen, well, they fold out this way. So I had to mount the rapid wing quite some distance away from the, the vehicle itself, which caused quite a big of a gap here. And then when it rained, the water had hit the back of the rapid wing awning and just runs constantly run right down here. So you couldn't open your side doors because I used to store a lot of stuff in there. So you couldn't really open them up to gain anything while it was raining heavy. And then you'd have a paddle of water down at the base here. 
So it wasn't really working. So I, so I removed that and when I purchased this Vitara three, just over three years ago, it came to the ARB awning I've got there. So you can see, so I never purchased this one. So this is an old ARB awning. Something new came out at the time. It was a hexatarp. Okay, so you're aware of the hexatarp. If you haven't heard of them, just go back on my channel and check out some of the vehicles. So I figured that'll rectify that coverage on the back. Because then I can set up the hexatarp, which is relatively quick to set up. And then all you do is back up. And yet the hexatarp comes in under here. And then you've got all this big area here. So then I thought, well, I don't need that 270 degree awning anymore. So I removed it. And then in its place, I placed the ARB. So my mate Luke at Drifter he saw some photos. It would have been on for probably four or five days. And he sent me a new message and said, ah, Phil, I've got something better for you. He gifted to me one of the, the Drifter Stockton four drive awning. So I had that one on for a little while. Of all those types, of these types of awning, these three, your four drive traditional awnings, I think the Drifter Stockton one is by far the best. So go back on my channel and have a look at the videos and in particular the feature that I mentioned about the pooling, okay? There's another bar which is actually stored inside here and it's got a light fitting inside it. There's a curved bar that goes into the middle. Now that didn't totally 100% eliminate it all pooling. But what it did do is instead of lowering the corner down that much, you only had to load about a foot. So it was still able to walk in without bending down. And you had your light here. And it's got the walls on the side. So guys, for the price, okay, they're good value. They're, they're not as cheap as the Kings, and there's a reason why, because I think they're better quality than the Kings ones, personally. But if you just want a standard four drive awning, Definitely look into the Drifter Stockton ones. I think they're brilliant. For me, camping is not about going to camp and setting up camp, okay? I, that's a stage where I just want to arrive at camp, bang, set up, you know, just grab a chair, relax, straight away. It's about the journey getting there, and it's about the, when you're at the place, and so on. And you want luxury, a comfortable, gear which is very important so the hexatarp was working fine but then there's many campsites you come across to where you couldn't put the hexatarps in particularly caravan parks so i was back at the same issue then where i had this and i didn't have coverage over the back it's one more advantage in regards to having an awning on the vehicle okay so you're traveling on the road I mean, as you know, nowadays we've got the fridges and freezers and we've got quick stoves that can cook and we've got coffee machines, etc. Some electric, some are manual and so on. So there's really no reason now why you have to pull over and purchase food while you're on the road because it all adds to the cost. And here in Australia, we've got so many excellent uh, free stop camping areas and even rest stops you can stop to have lunch with nice views over the lakes etc so you want a lot of you I know are starting to you know you go into that type of method and that's what I wanted to do and then summer came as good as these awnings are the problem with them is that you've got to set up their poles and you've got to peg them down so a lot of times you come to these rest areas and the ground is very hard or they're concrete or they're cemented it's just impossible and then the time it'll take you like five minutes to set up and then you've got to cook your meal or whatever and then another five six minutes to pack away and it'll be hot oh they'll just bug it you just pull in and mcdonald's or whatever and get something or a cafe and get something to eat but that's not what i wanted so then i did some research and i looked into the freestanding 270 degree awnings again and then the weight was, yeah, the weight was a concern because I had the rooftop tent on there. It's not that often that I actually use this shelter on the side here. It's only when it's raining, basically. 
because I had that big hexatop most of the time I was using that big hexatop. Let's do away with this and let's look for something more freestanding that covers the back end of the vehicle. And that's when I came across the Darchi, the Darchi 180R rear awning. So what they mean by 180R, it's like a 180 degree awning. So it's relatively freestanding. So what you do to set up, is that mounts at the back. So when you set these up, you pull one, okay, pretend it's mounted here. So you pull one end out, swing it around, tie it off. You pull the other end out, swing it around, tie it up. It ends up turning this 1.5 metre long awning <clears throat> into just over four metres long. But the only problem, it only comes out to about a metre, which is perfect because when I opened that door, and I still had a couple of inches where it overlapped at the back. I never ever had a chance to use it camping though. So I did purchase the additional walls with it. Now I'll show some photos here and it's fully waterproof. Um, so I think these are brilliant. Now these are really good for your dual cab utes or, or your single cab utes I should say where you haven't got a lot of space to mount them on. If you put one of these, uh, the only problem is, is you, remember you only got, comes out to one meter. But the walls, they actually angle out. So because they angle out, it actually gives you quite a big area. So my recommendation is to seriously consider if you're going to get one of these is to get the walls. So they do come with the legs. The legs, they've got fold down legs. If there's any bit of wind, major wind around or anything like that, they do recommend to drop the legs down. Then I changed my rooftop tent to the bunder top and that's not really allowed me to mount them on. It's, it's made it difficult to mount on. The plan was to keep using this at the back. When I was down there at Gold Coast, I asked about the brackets for the back and they were so kind that Bunder Tech actually gave me some brackets to mount this. But then he, he told me, What's the weight of it? 13 kilos. And he says, that's only about 13 kilos less than the ostrich wing. So he gave me a spill on all the good reasons to have the ostrich wings, etc. And I said, yeah, okay, I'll think about it a couple of days. And he says, well, I've got some coming in next week and I've got a couple spare there if you want them, the rest are already sold. So I thought about it. And I thought, yeah, let's go for the ostrich wing. Now, my vehicle is capable of carrying those weights, so there's no problems there. I'm very, very happy at the ostrich wing. I haven't used it camping yet, but I have used it when I was traveling back and forth on the highway. And one day it was like 33 degrees Celsius, and I had no problems. And I pulled up at a rest area, and I opened that up, actually less than 30 seconds, and that is fully set up. It's very rigid, so you don't need any poles on it, although it does have the drop down poles. So they say if the wind's above 30 kilometers per hour, they suggest to put the poles down. But that depends a lot on your vehicle and depends on your mounting system as well. We'll do another video on that, the way that is mounted onto the vehicle. That's where I'm at now, guys. So I'm using the ostrich wing, which is very similar to the 30 second awning which is the one I was very nearly going to buy and in hindsight it's probably the one I should have purchased because then I wouldn't have had to gone through all these awnings but at the time I was a bit worried about the weight well to be to be fair I only had a Suzuki Vitara and I couldn't really afford to put that weight on there even though I didn't have a rooftop tent That's the main reason otherwise I reckon if I had something more substantial for drive I definitely would have gone for the 30 second awning and in the, in the long run it would have saved me money now I'm not saying I, I don't like these other options I think they're great but they're not suitable for me as I explained the way I like to go camping but I want to show you something I want to finish off the video shortly and showing you my latest awning and just how quick it is to set up. Let me show you what I've, after all those awnings I've been through, 
the one I've come up with and the one that I probably should have bought from day one and honestly if your vehicle can support it don't worry too much about the weight as long as you're well under that dynamic load rating uh, you've got to be particularly careful when you drive off-road so that all depends on your mounting system and the type of vehicle that you've got as well so do your research first and check that out but let's just set this up <laughs> not a breath no time at all I can't tell you how wonderful that is so guys I drive along the highway and I pull up a camp or camp or even at a rest stop and I've got more than enough coverage cover this section here this is so sturdy I won't do it but the guy installed all this guys that's another thing I got all this professionally installed uh, while I was away picking all this up so guys are in the trade know what they're doing so they checked over the mounting system and believe me if this wasn't suitable to carry this they wouldn't have installed it in fact they asked me many questions exactly what I had etc so we went through retightened because this bolts this virtually these I've got three bars here and they're virtually bolted onto the roof of my vehicle here on six mounting points the brackets that's mounted on here he grabbed this bar and practically swung off it uh, but he's a lot lighter than I am too so I won't do that so it's a very sturdy setup now the rooftop tent as you're aware that only takes a push a button 20 seconds I could walk around there now push that button 20 seconds later grab me ladder hook the ladder on climb in into bed the bed's already made it's got the sheets, the pillows, the doona, the sleeping bag, that's all stored up there. And it closes. So to me, I reckon that's even quicker than a caravan. <laughs> and that bed is very comfy. So it took many goes, guys, many goes before I found the right setup for me. And I found the right setup. And I reckon this setup will suit anyone. Now, as I'm filming this, there's quite a bit of a breeze coming through. And you can't hear it because I'm using windproof mics and so on. So you can't hear anything. But I've got stiff bees coming right through this way. And this here, as you can see, it's hardly moving. Now, it does have drop-down legs. So there are drop-down legs included, if you need be okay particularly if you want to install the walls so i've got the wall sets another thing i like about this a lot of the other awnings i've shown have got like velcro tabs but for me i just find the awnings with the velcro i don't really like them because i've had issues with them as soon as the breeze picks up about 20 25 knots which is quite often uh, happens where i camp it just blows straight off so you've got to get modifications and get eye points put off in certain spots around and time off additional. So all adds to the setup time. This here has got zips on it. Heavy duty YKK zips. So I just zip the walls together and they zip over here as well. And I can fully enclose all this. There are extra additional walls I can get that's got a window and a door as well, which eventually I will get. Because I want to have this fully enclosed in at times. 
uh, particularly if I've got more than two people coming camping with me because uh, it's only two men now whereas I used to the eye camper was four men another thing I love about this is it's just got the one strap and it's not velcro and it's those buckle straps where you buckle in very quick to pack away as well so what we'll do we'll pack this away so say you finished you're in your day use area and you're finished all you do drop that peak down make sure this bag is over find the okay now you fold and fold this up as you do any other tent on in I should say all the same you only got the one bracket to worry It comes with a very generous size bag, as you can see. And that's it. Jump in the car and drive off. And continue your travels. So, definitely, particularly for me, it's the awning to own. You saw how quick that is to set up. And you saw the unique feature of this one here. Now we'll do another video on these. But if you can't wait to find out what that is, those brackets, they're called Tough Touring and they're manufactured in Australia, down in Melbourne. So guys, so guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. I think this is an exciting video for many of you. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Put a like on the video. Comment down below what you think. What's your favorite awning? What awning you have? And till next time, cheers and look after yourself.